Okay, ladies and gentlemen. We're now continuing with the uh, talk of Jos Weyers, World Champion Impressioning. And it's about attacking master key systems. So please give it up for Jos Weyers. Hello. Uh, I'm Jos Weyers. I'm a member of Tool. Tool is the open organization of lock pickers, and that means we open locks as a sport, as fun, mostly without force, with permission, and every now and then with keys. I'm going to talk about keys. Keys go go in locks. This is a lock. Any questions? <laughs> okay, um, they go in lock. Duh. Do not touch that button. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> That's a lock. Yes. Da. If the round one, I should really should not do that. This is also black. Okay. So if the round thing turns, we call it open. And uh, if you are actually talking about a door and an attacker, then it matters in what direction that round thing turns. Uh, as a sports picker, I don't care. If it turns, it turns. Um, this talk is called uh, Attacking Master Key Systems, and for that I have to explain quite a lot of things. And so I'll start kindergarten level, this is this, and then we'll work up to the better parts. Okay, uh, my slides will be, uh, all the locks will be uh, uh, upside down which is wrong, which is American, and that takes a bit of my uh, uh, filing time, so that's why I do this. If you look at this lock schematically, it's a round thing that we need to turn, and it has a hole in it. If you look into the hole, you see a piece of metal. Nothing much to see. So if you now take off one layer to, so you can look into the lock, so we're basically taking an MRI, then this happens. So you see, um, now you also see that why it doesn't turn, because there's a blue bit stuck in the way. Um, what we need to do in order to open the lock uh, is to use a special tool, it's called a key, and if we put that in, that whole pin stack gets lifted until there's a shear line, that's the line between blue and red, and if that's at the correct level, the lock can turn. Right? Easy peasy. This is a one pin lock, that should not really exist, so normally five is a normal number. <coughs> so you have uh, five pin stacks next to each other, and all those pins have to be at the correct level lifted so uh, in order to open it. So that goes like this. So a key comes in, pushes all the things up. Now you can open this lock. And if you're... This one is too deep at position number two, because we'll, uh, always we start counting from the shoulder. And uh, yeah. So number two is too deep now, so that won't open. And even if it also if it's too high, it also won't open. Um, so in theory, if we start turning a lock with without a key in it, then there's five blue bits preventing it from turning, right? That's the theory. And of course, the real world doesn't really matter about theory, because in the real world we have crap like this. Um, the thing with the holes in it, that's your cylinder and the holes are the uh, chambers where the uh, pin stacks go in. Those, um, those, that latch is supposed to be at a 90 degree angle, which it clearly isn't. This, this one has some wear and tear. If you look at these pins, they're supposed to be cylindrical. Well, they're cylindrical-ish. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's, and even if they were made better than these, um, it's very hard to make two metal objects alike. You can make them look alike, but it's very hard to make them exactly identical to each other. If you zoom in enough, there will be a difference. And if you don't see a difference, you haven't zoomed in enough. So what that tells us, that if we look at the original picture again, with the five bits that are preventing this lock from turning, that's not really true. There's one bit that's preventing this lock from, fir from turning first. So if I start Turning this lock, one of those blue bits will be the first one to get squished to the side, and that will prevent it from turning. Does that make sense? If we only look at that particular pin stack, so the one that gets stuck first, then we're back to this picture again. So what we can do, because if, if we do turn it, then it gets move, squished to the side. 
And if we then lift it up, there will be some, uh, it, 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 it'll feel like it doesn't want to go up because it's squished to the side. And then if we do lift it to the correct level, then your lock will turn ever so slightly until the next blue bit is preventing it from turning. And also, if you look at the blue bit now, it's stuck on, the, on that ledge. That would be ideally so then we can take it step by step. Visually, looks like this. We have a lock. We, took, uh, we, we, we put a turning force on there. Not too much, but enough for something to get stuck. We go in with a pick, and this is just gravity in the spring. Gravity in the spring. I'm not used to doing this at speed. <laughs> this one doesn't want to go up, so that's the one we will push up. And with some luck, that stays there, and then we have to figure out what now is the one that's stuck. It helps if you remember where you were, so you don't have to uh, look at, at, uh, at, at pins that you know that are set again. And this, but this is basically what lockpicking is. But we have to understand lockpicking before we can explain impressioning, and then we have to explain master keying, and then we have to explain how to attack those. Yes, we have 45 minutes, won't be doing any questions. <laughs> And then we have an open lock. So that's picking. Duh. <laughs> okay, uh, but this is impressioning master key systems. So let's start about impressioning. With lock picking, you can't half pick a lock because it's not open. And if you then have to leave because the guard comes in or whatever and you start over again, then you really start over again. Um, so if I'm attacking a door, how long would that take? Depends. And how long can I be in, in front of your, let's say, your server room, your server room door without getting questioned, shot, dragged off, insulted? Or is that two seconds? I guess I'm okay within two seconds, right? Can I be there for a minute, a whole minute, without being questioned? Ten, maybe? Ten minutes? Well, if I am able to be at your server room door for ten minutes without being questioned, I think we have other problems. Um, but let's, let's say those two seconds. I will not be questioned within two seconds, I think. Especially not if I'm holding a phone and uh, wrong door and then start off again. If I do that twice a day for about a week, will I get called upon? It's like, what did you do? I don't know. <coughs> well, that's, that's a default state, so that... that <laughs> okay. Remember this, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll move along. What if we take that original lock that we w saw before and put a key in it, but a uncut key, so a full key that has no cuts in it? Good thing we don't have uh, microphones everywhere in the audience. <laughs> Thank you for that. So with the picking, there were blue bits preventing the lock from turning. And now because we have this hunk of metal in there, it, now it's all the red bits that are preventing the, key from, uh, the, the lock from turning. But same principle applies. If I start turning this, there will be one of those bits will be the first one that prevents the cylinder from turning. Yes? Okay. So what we now can do is put a key in, start turning it, and we have now a very cool turning tool in there that's called a key, and so that's useful. Um, if we, and there's some give in your key. If you put your key in, you can wiggle it a bit. It's not a very snug fit, and it shouldn't be, because there's way too much wear and tear. So there is some, some give. And that means that what you can do, if you start turning this, and put your key, uh, move your key up and down a bit, then on position one, two, three, and five, you'll just be pushing those pins up. Because the only thing that's holding them back is a spring and a tiny bit of gravity. And, but in position four, the pin doesn't want to go up because that's the ones stuck to the side. <coughs> so if you look at where that pin is touching your key, on position number four, there will be a bigger force on your key than on the other four positions. Yes? Okay. So what we're going to do, key in, turn, wiggle, 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 then turn the other side, which now we can do because there's metal in, in the way, and do that also there. 
And with some luck, another pin will prevent it from turning in that direction. If we then take the key out and look at it very carefully, then you see, and it's not that obvious, which is correct, it's quite hard to see, that's why we have magnification aids, and there's a mark there and there's a mark there. Because uh, keys are very quite, quite soft material, and if you look at your key closely, then you will see where the bigger forces occurred. So what we do, that looks a bit like this, and so what we're going to do at the positions where these marks are, we're going to take off some material. And some is the uh, scientific term here. Um, there are charts, if you know what brand it is, how much to take away. And if you don't have those charts, then it, it's, it should be not too much. It's baby steps. Okay, then that's still not a working key. If we put this same key in again, and we start over, rinse and repeat. If we start turning this, this pin is probably still the one preventing it from turning in that direction. So that will make a mark. This pin, same thing, will make a mark. Um, so there's marks in the valleys we just created, there and there, and it looks a bit like this. And what we're going to do is, at those marks, we take away more material. So we to repeat. So what comes next? Well, actually, this bit is done. That's on the correct level. So if we start turning in one direction, then with some luck, another pin will be the one preventing it from turning in that direction first. So, if we start wriggling this, th there will still be a mark there, because nothing changed at that uh, position. Th this position won't mark, because, well, there's th it wasn't stuck there. But on another position, there will be a pin that's preventing it from turning in that direction. So we file off even more material. We keep on doing this until we have a working key that will look vaguely a bit like this. Uh, on top, there's the original key that I didn't have, and at the bottom is the one I created. Uh, it looks a bit weird. It look, looks like a, a shark took a bite out of it, but that's because I use a round file instead of a squarey one, which is way easier. And now we're going to demo this. If you're any good, you win prizes. And demo. Demo all the things. There is a quite high possibility of fail. <coughs> See. Don't do things. We have a. We have all sorts of stuff. This is a lock. Actually, it's two locks, but let's start at number one. We have a key that I've prepared. It's uh, the surface is a bit smoother now, so I should be able to see marks. Key in. I use a handle to have a bit more force on it, but basically still a key. Turning force one direction. Move it up and down, make it a bit less jiggly. So I move it one direction, other direction while I'm jiggling. And then I look at the key. Marks can be quite subtle. And I take off some material. If you saw, that's some.
Um, of course, that was theory. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it's not all that linear. So a pin might stop marking at some point, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's at the correct level yet. But uh, if everything stops marking, then you're... Yeah, that's a technical term. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, if you overfile, so file too much at some point, then it's uh, indeed, then you're fucked. And uh, to be honest, I thought we reached that. Now wish. Okay, rinse and repeat. I overfiled. Uh, if you're nice to your local locksmith, then it gets there. eBay is your friend also. <coughs> Sorry? But you can get iron instead of bronze. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Hans Bach said if you buy keys of the interwebs, you might get iron keys, steel keys instead of bronze. That's true. Yeah. And yeah, then you order more and hope for the best. Yeah, a steel key won't mark that easily because, well, it doesn't dent that uh, that that good. And filing is harder. Open. <laughs> and that's just step one. <laughs> oh, was anyone faster? <laughs> I do have pointy metal bits here. Okay, <laughs> now it's smooth, so that works. <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> so that works on a normal pin stack. Uh, this is a uh, uh, open uh, lock, open different team than you're used to. What you see in the middle, because you have those those pins at the bottom, I'm not going to use this as a pointy device because then stuff goes back. Uh, those uh, halter shaped pins, those are halter pins. Those are meant to prevent you from picking your lock because it makes it harder or more interesting, depends how you look at it. Uh, but because I start off with a full key, the moment these come in play, I'm too far already. So it's, it doesn't do anything to deter this piece of picking. 
Um, also, nasty pins, uh, nasty key pins can make it a bit harder. Uh, we'll do that later. But uh, yeah, makes it more interesting. And also dimple locks, Th this technique works very well on dimple locks, because you don't have to file that deep. So the key you see is filed across. And if you take a blank at the bottom, and uh, I cut the key above with a one, two, three, four, five, six depth. So you go deeper and deeper and deeper. So in the end, you, go, you file actually through the key, but uh, well, care. OK. But the talk is called Impressioning Master Key Systems. What the heck is a master key system? This is a master key system. So we just look at the key pins, so the pins that are touching your key. And the ones, uh, the housing pins, the ones above that, those are not interesting at the moment. And what we see is that in position two, three, and f uh, uh, three four, and five, there's an extra pin in there. It's, it's a disk. And that means that you can do all sorts of cool stuff, because now you have two positions, you have more keys that work in this lock. Why they do this is if you have a bigger building, so you have a lot of doors, every door has a key, but there's a boss key or a cleaner's key, whatever, so there's one key that can open multiple doors. And maybe there's more of those and there's one Uber master key that opens all the doors. As an attacker, of course, you want the top one, because that's root. That's if you have that key that will open all the doors. OK, so if you look at this pin stack, then, well, if you look at the first two pins, that's easy. Those have to be lifted to the correct level, and then it's open, right? Uh, but if you look at this pin, this will open, so will this. So we have two possible keys for these three pins. and that adds up if you put more disks in there. And of course now, on only three positions, there's a disk. And so this will open, but also this will open. That will open. That will open. So that adds up. And if you put more disk in a single pin stack, that adds it even up more. So you end up with quite a lot of possibilities. But I want to have that top one. Because all those possibilities, open that door. And one of these is your master. Hmm. So you're on the red team, you take your box with you, and then you try a key and try a key and try a key. Oh, this one opens. Might it be the master? You go to the next door. No, it's not. Rinse and repeat. So we have to f figure out a way to, uh, to get to the top. Uh, this is Matt Blaze. He wrote a white paper on it. What they basically did, what, what used to be the normal way, is uh, you have a lock and a working key, a valid working key, not the one you just filed, but a valid working key. That operates the door, right? Then you copy that key apart from one position. So you do not duplicate position one, and two, three, four, five, you do. That will not open your lock. Take one position off take one position off until it opens, and then r keep on going. So you get a complete map how this looks like. But still, then you have a map of what the internals looks like, but you still have, again, uh, a shitload of options. So it's hard. So yeah, uh, if they're, they're all key pins, if they're all uh, have disk in it, then, then it's 30-something, uh, but that adds up quite a lot if you put more disk in it. So what we're going to do, um, about 10 years ago, I had a thought experiment, and I came up with a solution, I thought. And then I talked to a couple of guys, and they said, well, it's that easy. It can't be true. And that's what they said about the paper clips. <coughs> so it is quite easy. And uh, yeah, uh, that was 10 years ago, so I decided to get it into the open. First, we'll start off with some animation stuff. This is made by... OK, we have three locks. <laughs> <laughs> because reasons. <laughs> Boom. I 
I had this idea to do this visually, and then I explained it to Jan Willem, which uh, designed uh, these pins. First, he made a wooden wooden thing that I really liked, and then all of a sudden there was an update, uh, an upgrade, and we have this: the three locks and some spare parts. <laughs> <laughs> we have a blank key. This is a key, so if you put it in there, this will lift up all the keys, uh, all the all the pins, right? This is your shear line. So the key should be something like this, right? And then rinse and repeat. But if I start off with a blank key, well, if I do that, so if I impression this, this will mark, that will mark, that will mark, that will mark. They all mark at the first time. So I speed up a bit, because of course that would be one or two pins at the same time. No, still not there. So, impression a bit more. It's quite faster this way than actually firing. <laughs> and of course, having see through locks is also very helpful. <laughs> so, don't actually use those padlocks you get from China, right? This one would mark, that one would mark. So, one, two, three, one. That. Okay. Uh, one, five. Sorry? I. one's almost there. That one's not. So, ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay. Is that open? Put it on here. Who is the most? Whatever. Yeah, let's call this an open. <laughs> We're the see through lock. Actually, I don't think this, I uh, think this is, uh, that one's still marking, I presume. Yeah, that's better. Now it's smooth. Okay, so this is a key to this lock. Because this is also a key, this is a key, but this is the first one we reach. So this is exactly what I've done there. I just start off with the blank key until it open, I call it a key that's working on that door. And I don't know the status yet, because there's a possibility that that is also, well, this is one of the, uh, of the lot of keys in that box that works. So you go to a second door with that same key you just got and figure out if that still works. Well, that one is good, almost. All right, so no, that's not opening. <coughs> so if I start impressioning it, same key on that lock, then it'll mark there. It'll still mark there. That will open. So now we have... <laughs> second step is easier. Because I'm doing less. There are a lot of these pins I haven't even touched yet on, on, on the key. So now we have a working key for this lock. Go back to door number one with this lock, uh, with this key. <coughs> That's not gonna work. Okay, well, I'm at this door anyhow, so keep on filing. Nope. Now that opens again. Will that be the master key? Door number two. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, those are round times. So then I go to another door. 
Let's see if this is straight. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. That should work. <laughs> see? Kinda, yeah. <laughs> it won't go smooth, but it'll open. <laughs> and of course, there's a magical fourth door that will open also. So we now have a master key. And from all the possible combinations, I used one blank instead of a box. Okay, that was theory. <laughs> yeah, let's do scary shit. <laughs> Demo. We have made, well not we, a uh, Holly Poor, a very competent locksmith from America, uh, hit me up with uh, a master key system consisting of 20 doors, of which I have four of the locks. Internals look like this. Yes, that's considered cheating, but let's. And yeah, let's see how it goes. Door number one is open, because that's the one I impressioned before. Um, that looks like this, that's the internals of it. Uh, the key should look vaguely a bit like that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like I said, we have a master key system. So we have multiple doors. It's door number one, door number two, door number uh, three and four. So door number one opens, we proved that. Door number two, negative. This is three, negative, four is a yes. Okay, so we have one key that opens one and four, two and three not. Okay. So this key does not work on lock number two. Lock number two. And at this point, it would be actually wise to copy this key. <laughs> <laughs> because reasons. <laughs> yeah, then you're fucked anyhow, yeah. This is a, the same core as, uh, th the question was, what is the little tool you put over your key every now and then? That's a sort of core, so it's the inner workings of the lock, without any pins or springs or anything in it. If you look through the holes where normally the springs and the pins would be, then you see the exact position where the pins would have been. So, so that means you also have a clear view of the piece of key where the pins would touch. So if you're hunting for marks, this basically tells you exactly where the marks should be. And they aren't, of course. <laughs> we have an open lock. <laughs> yeah, because it's way shorter than the initial lock, because, well, a lot of the work was done already. Um, <laughs> Daar, oké. Out. That should look a bit like that. Yeah, ish. Oké. Okay. So we made a key for door number two. And let's see how door number one does now. That's a negative. Two works, we know that. Uh, this is three. Three works, okay. So at least we have some subby master or something like that. Four is a negative. So, negative, positive, positive, negative. Okay, so it doesn't work on door number one. <coughs> Let's go to door number one. Uh, door number one.
make that a bit clearer. Open. Okay. So that's door number one again. And that should look a bit. Duh. Well, it does open number one. It does open number two. Let's uh, ignore that one. <laughs> oh, it's apparently not. Okay. That still works. Oh. That still works. works. <laughs> so keep on moving from door to door until stuff happens. And yeah. <laughs> 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 it's magic. <laughs> so we have one key that opens everything, right? <laughs> okay, but you got the general idea. So you impression A lock, and you basically keep on doing that to your key. So you keep abusing the same key over and over and over again until it works there. It doesn't work here. Okay, I'll start preparing it for there. So instead of that whole box of keys, you have one. And as you saw, it helps us a bit to practice. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> um, well, log one and two got quite some abuse. Uh, but the abuse is on the pins, because you talk the lock quite hard, harder than you would normally do with the with your hand, with just your bare hands. But you really need to gut your lock quite completely, saw it open and, and well, uh, look at it that way. Then you will find forensic traces on lock number one and two. Lock number four, I barely touched. So lock number four will have the same forensics as you using a wrong key in that door, which is quite close to zero. So forensically on lock number four, Good luck to you. Forensically, on lock number one, 
you won't be opening your lock that way. You, you won't do a forensic research unless you really know somebody got in. So from the outside, your lock still works. It has no more wear and tear than, 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 than normal-ish. You really have to gut your lock f completely to figure out what happened. And once you do that, the signs are quite clear if you know where to look. But on four, you shit out a lock. On one, you'll see that. So what you could do in an attack scenario, because one took the most abuse, is steal that lock. This, this, this could be a key to like padlock or something like that. Or a fence or anything with tiny legs. I don't know. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Yes? Uh, are there defenses against it? Or is it already Guns help every now and then. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am doing weird shit at your door. The question was, is there any defense against this? Um, not that much. No. I do need to be able to get these blanks. Some blanks are harder to get, but we're still talking about a piece of metal in a certain shape. Shape, there are ways, shape ways, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 can, you, you, you can buy blanks, um, but it's quite hard to defend against that. I, I had one picture with the funky, uh, uh, with, with the weird key pins. That makes it harder. It makes it definitely more interesting. And because all these were just flush, uh, normal, regular pins, and I still have be able to fail. So I it's, it's harder on more intricate locks, but we're talking harder. Definitely not impossible. Any more questions? There's a question there. If uh, the master key is always at the lowest, so it's basically so finding down the key the most. Nope. nope. That's, that would be very bad. The question was, is a master key always the one you can file down? Is that the way correct? Can you always file down to the master key like you're doing right now? No. I can do this because I start with a uncut key. If I start so cutting... I'm yeah. not sure, but what I mean is basically you cut with the first lock without them. Uh -huh. And the second lock without them. Is the result of the procedure always down to the master key? So do you always only need to take the lowest key? Yes. If I only look at this pin stack, right? So a uh, blank key will push it all up because there's a lot of metal. And I start filing until I reach a shear line. This shear line could be, it's a shear line. Is it the master shear line or not? Those are your two options. So what I mean is no, no, no. The, the two options are this shear line is your master shear line or not, right? If that's your master shear line, it will be on all locks, because otherwise it's not the master. So that one will never mark again. So if it does mark ev somewhere, then this wasn't the master shear line. So then I ha need to file further until I do reach the master shear line. So once I reach it, it's done, it won't mark again. So actually, my question is different. This is a technical question. Sorry? It doesn't. No. It's the first common match that I'm looking for. Because if this is the master, it will never mark. But yes, there's a key that opens it on that one, which is not the master. Dan laten we die bij. Want tijd is op. Oké. Thank you very much, Jos, for being here again.